Today we're going to deal with two things. Firstly, look at the Joey Pact, a lightweight and somewhat problem-ridden ultra-compact that's been around here in Europe for a few years. And secondly, use our analysis of the Pact to make three arguments for why you shouldn't buy the brand new and highly advertised Nuna TRVL. What do these two models have in common, you might ask? Well, Joey and Nuna are sister companies, you see. The house brands of manufacturing giant Wonderland Nursery Goods, who also runs production for a slew of other manufacturers, and as can often occur with companies like this, is my firm belief that the TRVL is just a slightly altered reskinning of the pact, sold for twice the price. Before getting into that though, we're going to start by properly going over the pact itself, beginning with some stats, where the model clocks in at just over 6 kilos and falls down to 24 by 52 by 57 centimeters, which is on the light's end for ultra compacts, but too large to pass as cabin luggage. It can carry 15 kilos in the seat and 4.5 kilos in the underslung shopping basket. In terms of child comfort, the PAX canopy has relatively standard dimensions, though its high positioning makes for somewhat subpar sunshading for younger toddlers. The textiles feel pretty cheap to me, and are both quite thin and have non-removable boards, though it's worth noting that these elements are pretty in line with the model's price class, and that improving the textiles and adding leatherette details is definitely among the changes made for the TRVL. As far as the pack seat dimensions are concerned, while the width and the length of the backboard, leg rest, and space beneath the canopy are all generously proportioned, child comfort is unfortunately ruined by two factors. Firstly, a baseboard, which at 18 centimeters is one of the shallowest I've ever seen, and secondly, an upright angle that is definitely not upright enough. To me it feels like only around 45 degrees, which can be tremendously frustrating for a lot of children, as attested to by a multitude of customer reviews from purchasers of the pact and which, when combined with that shallow baseboard, creates a situation where older toddlers are likely to slide off the seat, held in place only by the harness and a seriously flimsy bumper bar. When it comes to parent comfort, the Pact has a decent handle height of 106 centimeters and a somewhat larger and more accessible shopping basket than is common with most Ultra Compacts, due to the height of the seat base and the way the basket protrudes off the rear frame. While as far as folding is concerned, barring eventual wear concerns, the model gets an A-plus from me, being easy to fold down, flat and compact, and, with a weight even lighter than the Baby Zen Yo-Yo and a generously long shoulder strap, is quite comfortable to carry around. It doesn't have the one-step autofold of the TRVL, but note that this shift has likely been accomplished without much reworking of the basic mechanics of the system itself, rather probably just by changes made to the rear frame and shortening of the front frame and easing tension in the central locking mechanism. When it comes to driving, the Pact unfortunately suffers from the flip side of that light weight, both in that the model can be tough to maneuver and feels quite flimsy, straining and bending as you steer, and often feeling as though it might break when tipping, in particular when used with a heavier child or with the added weight of a car seat, and is also not the sort of model that you want to leave standing unattended with your child in it, as that angled seat creates a propensity for tipping. Added to this is the fact that the rear wheels sit pretty loose, which can be a bit noisy and also makes the model somewhat rickety feeling to drive, anytime the road gets a little rough. Moving on to look at the mechanics of the model, the Pact folds down via a two-stage wire-based system, whereby the handle-mounted trigger pulls a pair of wires to release the first hinged locking point, which, while rotating, subsequently draws a second set of wires to release a second pair of locking points and complete the fold. This sort of a system is quite common at the moment, and is convenient when working correctly, but does involve a multitude of smaller internal components capable of breaking or falling out of alignment over time due to wear and general loosening. The pack doesn't lock to closed, which does eliminate one source of wear, relying instead on resistance within the mechanisms, resulting from how tightly the components are fitted, which, as a result, can also be subject to loosening over time. Looking at the model's overall structure, the Pact has some decent horizontal support, even a welded crossbar on the rear of the model, but do note that the bars are quite thin and have a real potential to bend or break down the road due to the stress of steering the model if used closer to its full weight capacity and or over rougher ground. And the key weak point as far as I see it are the spindly stork legs here, below the crossbar. Looking further at the rear frame, the Pact has suspension, but the tension in the springs is too loose in my opinion, contributing to that overall bendy feeling of the stroller and putting a lot of pressure on the point where the rear housings attach to the frame, which are already pretty loose right out of the box and are apt to get looser as a result. And Wonderland Nursery Goods undoubtedly knows this is a weak point, since the whole mount the back end yourself non-removable wheels thing has been changed for the TRVL. For the pack though, this is a problem, and also affects the brake system, where the model is left with a wire-based setup without an adjustment screw, meaning there's no way of fixing tension in the wire to combat wear, and that also has those non-removable wheels, making it near impossible to fix problems without dri drilling rivets or replacing the whole system. Looking lastly at the front end, the engineering is very different. 
the whole front end being quite solid and built with a similar design to what can be found on larger Nuna models, with front forks that sit tightly in their housings and sturdy, well-proportioned suspension springs and swivel locks. As a final note, the pack's wheel size is quite standard for ultra compacts in terms of diameter, but they're a bit thicker than usual, which, while improving grip, may also contribute to the model's subpar maneuverability in combination with its fragile and lighter weight chassis by increasing drag. So then, would I recommend getting the Joey Pact? No, unfortunately not in my opinion. While the general engineering of the model, including the somewhat flimsier chassis and driving issues, are honestly more or less what I'd expect for the price, the sloping seat and shallow baseboard are the real clinchers for me, making for a model that I wouldn't recommend buying for any price. And what then does this say about the Nuna TRVL? Well, let's get into that then. I've already pointed out that the textiles, fold, and rear wheels and housings have been reworked a little for the TRVL, but beyond this, three issues can clearly be deduced just by looking at the model online and knowing what I've said so far about the Pact. First and foremost being the fact that that sloping seat clearly remains from looking at their advertising video. This being as upright as the model will go, as, since the TRVL uses a draw strap for positional adjustment, the most elevated position is limited by the gradient of the arms, provided that the base of the seat also terminates at those arms, which it clearly does. And this is still not upright enough. In addition, though it's harder to prove without holding the model, judging from the age of the child in this video, sitting with the leg rest up, and looking at other pictures of the model with the leg rest down, I also highly doubt that the baseboard has been lengthened at all. Secondly, while I would have liked to give Nuna the benefit of the doubt and assume that they'd build the TRVL less flimsy feeling than the Pact, this is not borne out by the fact that the weight of the models remains more or less exactly the same, while the dimensions have actually increased, making it sort of impossible that they've added more metal, further reinforced any of the connection points, or increased the circumference of the bars. And note that, when looking at all strollers, larger size with lower weight should always be a red flag. And lastly, is a matter of blatantly false advertising on the part of Nuna that just rubs me the wrong way. Notice how the whole plot line of this video is that they're going to the airport? To me this is a clear attempt to suggest the initial purpose of Ultra Compacts, that they will be acceptable as cabin luggage, but as I said at the beginning, the pact was already outside the IATA's guidelines, and the TRVL is even bigger, enough so that there is virtually no chance of getting it approved by the vast majority of airlines in my experience. The advertisement suggests that your trip will be like this. But I think this is far more likely. Yeah, I'm not paying $270. Which essentially pulls the TRVL up into a different class of strollers, one where far sturdier, more capable, and more comfortable models abide for the same price. Because with that $450 price tag, the TRVL just doesn't come even close to competing. It's relying entirely on branding, and the reality, as far as I see it, seems more like an already underperforming model sold for half the price, was simply given a little makeover, magnetic buckle, some leatherette, and a few peekaboo windows, and was then shipped over to a different brand in a different region to try and start a new life in a new world. In any case, we hope you found this video interesting, and if you did, we ask that you subscribe, as it helps us to continue making videos in the future. In addition, if you are currently shopping for a stroller, we have a buyer's guide on our Patreon page which lists a wide range of models that we recommend, with a lot of technical and lifestyle related information. You can find it by following the link in the description. Thank you.